Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to populate your table from an actual data source instead of just writing the word bacon in every single row. Because I don't know, maybe you wanna do that, but it's probably pretty useful if you got your data from something like an array or a tuple, or I don't know, maybe you're connecting to a MySQL database, whatever. What I did already before this tutorial though is I made some quick tuples. I didn't wanna you know, have you guys sit here for like two minutes and watch me type everything out. So I made one called people, which is just a list of people and what state they live in. And also if you wanna use this one, here are just a list of some of my videos and how many videos are in each playlist. So again, just copy this down or just make your own real quick, whatever. But now that we have some kind of data source, the first thing that we need to do is this. Instead of just returning three, saying, okay, I wanna create three rows, no matter what, what I actually wanna do is go to the data source and say, the number of rows that we create in each table is actually dependent on how many items are in your data source. For example, if you're making a table of people, your table would have three rows. If you're making a table for videos, it would have five rows. So it isn't just a hard coded number like this, it's going to be dynamic. And this is actually really easy. So instead of returning just a plain integer, what I wanna do, in this example, I'll just use people, why not? So what you do is you take your data source, whatever it is, mine is called people, and you count the items or elements in it. So again, this is returning three, but it's doing it smartly because if we were to ever add one more, then it would return four, so on and so forth, and we wouldn't have to change the code right here. So now, instead of just returning the word bacon, what I can do is this. So now, since each of these items in the tuple consists of two pieces of information, a name and a location for each item, let's go ahead and extract that data into two different variables. And we can actually do it all in one line. If we just write something like person, uh, name and we'll just write person location and then we take this and set it equal to people which is the tuple and I'll show you guys what I'm doing in just a second so index path dot row all right so check this out actually let me tighten this up just a bit All right, so remember, what this method is gonna do is it's gonna be called every single time we wanna create a new row. Now before, what we did is we just returned the cell with the word bacon in it, and that's why it stuck bacon in every single one. But what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, go to this tuple, and the contents that we wanna return is dependent on where you at, you're at in your loop. Now, how do we do that? Well, this index path row, this is a variable that gets passed into us whenever it's creating our table. So the very first time it calls this method, index path is gonna be zero. The next time when it tries to create the next row, it's gonna be one. And the last time, since there are only three rows in this table, it's gonna be two. So zero, one, and two. Well, what we wanna do for that is we just wanna say, okay, the data that we want to return for zero, one, and two is plug that zero as your people tuple. So the first time it's gonna return Bucky Roberts, the second time it's gonna return Lisa Tucker, and the third time it's gonna return Emma Hot Pocket. So again, we can use that number in conjunction with our tuple to return the proper data. Pretty stinking awesome. But now all we did is we took that data and we saved it in variables. We didn't actually use it in any kind of a, like special way. So we can do that right now. So if we take that cell, which is just blank right now, and we call text label, check if it's empty, and access the property text, then we can set this equal to, I'll just set it equal to their name. I won't even worry about the location right now. So now what we're doing is we're grabbing the information on each loop, we're extracting the name, and we're setting it equal to the text of that cell. So now let's go ahead and run this and check it out. All right, look at that. 
So again, it kind of did the same thing. It said, okay, I'm going to make you one table. How many rows am I going to have? Well, I have to go up here and count this. One, two, three. All right, so you want a table with three rows. Now, what do you want to... Let me show this again. What do you want the contents to be? Well, every time I create a row, I'm going to call index path zero. What's the zero? Oh, that's Bucky Roberts. What's one? Lisa Tucker. What's two? Emma Hot Pocket. Now, of course, I'm going to take each of their names and set it equal to the text for that cell and print it out. So pretty simple stuff. And actually, let me go ahead right now and show you guys how to create a table with more than one group.